The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Saturday, July 16, 2022, and giving you match breakdowns and our parlay picks on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions, then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 360 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Our first game is. Minnesota Twins vs Chicago White Sox. Chicago has gone on multiple four-game losing streaks this season, which has put the White Sox in a rough position as they try to battle back towards the .500 mark. They dropped the first two games of their American League Central Series at Cleveland earlier this week, but they responded with a pair of wins to pick up a four-game split. Their momentum carried over into Thursday's series opener in Minnesota as they notched a 12-2 blowout to extend their winning streak to three games. They entered Friday's slate trailing Minnesota by just four games in the AL Central standings. Chicago is also just 2.5 games back of the final AL wild card spot. Minnesota used a strong run in April and a six-game winning streak at the end of May to take control of the AL Central. The Twins have been mediocre of late, though, losing five of their last seven games. They dropped two out of three against Texas before splitting a two-game series with Milwaukee earlier this week. Minnesota was unable to get off to a hot start in this series, getting blown out on Thursday. The Twins are 3.5 games ahead of Cleveland atop the AL Central standings. They rank 7th in the majors in team batting average, hitting at a .254 clip. Lynn has been a pitcher that I haven't minded backing historically, but I cannot back him in his current form. He got off to a late start to the season and has not been able to find his best stuff, allowing at least 3 runs in 5 of his 6 starts. Lynn is now having to face one of the top offensive teams in baseball, one game removed from allowing eight runs, so this is not shaping up to be a profitable spot to take the White Sox. Minnesota has dominated this head-to-head -head series, winning seven of the last nine games. Bundy has not been great this year, but he has been more consistent than Lynn. Our team pick is. Minnesota for the win. The White Sox are averaging 4.34 runs per game and 4.49 runs per game on the road. They averaged 7.67 runs per game in their last three games against the Twins. With Minnesota giving up 4.02 runs per game at home, the White Sox will hit their average in this game. The Twins are averaging 4.54 runs per game and 4.15 runs per game at home. They averaged 6 runs per game in their last three games against the White Sox. Even though Chicago is giving up 3.71 runs per game on the road. They are giving up 5.66 runs per game in games started by Lynn, so expect the Twins to score enough runs to push the score over the total. The Twins and White Sox played over the total in five of their last six meetings. Our total pick is. Over 9. St. Louis Cardinals vs. Cincinnati Reds. The Cincinnati Reds continue to improve before baseball's eyes after a miserable start to 2022, when the team cleaned house in the offseason, losing their best starting pitcher and a majority of the team's power. Don't look now, but the Reds have been a respectable team since May and are coming off a series with the New York Yankees in which they won two out of three games and lost the only game by a run in 10 innings. The team was over .500 in May, struggled in June, and has now started the month of July at 8-6 heading into this series. On Friday night against the Cardinals, the Reds pitchers walked eight Cardinals through the first seven innings, which proved to be their downfall in a series opening loss to the Cards. The Cardinals hope to end the first half of the season on a strong note against the last place Reds, as they continue to chase the Brewers for the NL Central Division crown. In the team's last 12 games prior to Friday's series opener, the Cardinals are just 4-8 and have had trouble stringing wins together. The Cardinals were hoping to close out the first half stronger with this 10-game home stand, but have been shut out three times so far during the first seven games at home. On Friday night, Brendan Donovan singled home two runs as part of his three-RBI night in the seventh inning to break open a tight game to help the Cardinals pick up their 49th win and snap a two-game losing streak. While they were slowed in their first matchup against Lodolo, the Cardinals have hit left-handers very well this season. The team is hitting .259 against left-handed pitching and belted 16 home runs. They will trot out the power right-handed bats of Nolan Arandado, Paul Goldschmidt and even veteran Albert Pujols, which should bode well against the rookie. I also favor the fact that this is the Cardinals' second look at Lodolo, so they should have a strategy in place. 
As for the Reds, they have played very well of late, but have the sixth highest strikeout ratio in baseball. Nicola should be able to put together a big strikeout performance against the Reds' free swinging lineup. Take the Cardinals for the win. These offenses have not been doing well in the previous 30 days, as the Cardinals are averaging 3.75 runs per game in their previous 28 games, while the Reds are scoring 4.04 runs per game in their last 27 games. Neither team has been hitting for much power as the Reds and the Cardinals have both hit six homers in the previous seven days. The under has hit in five of the previous seven games against one another. Go with under 8.5 runs in this game. Chicago Cubs vs New York Mets the New York Mets looked great in their last series against the Braves, as their starting pitching rotation is still one of the strongest in the MLB. They are now getting healthy and they are very tough to score against. The Mets are also 6-4 in their last 10 games. At the plate, they are currently scoring 4.79 runs per game and they are hitting .254. This is the fourth most runs scored per game and the fifth highest overall team batting average. They have shown that they can consistently reach base and drive in men when they are in scoring position. The Mets have also shown that they have a little bit of home run power littered throughout their lineup. They are averaging 1.01 home runs per game, which is the 18th highest avenge in the league. They aren't one-dimensional at the plate and they can score multiple different ways. I also expect New York to stay fairly conservative once they have reached base safely, as they have only stolen 30 bases this season, which is the 26th least in the league. They allow their bats to move their base runners into scoring position, as they don't want to risk losing any possible runs. The Chicago Cubs have not had the season that they were originally hoping for, but they still have time to turn it around. They are currently in fourth place in the NL Central, as they are still 14.5 games out of first place. They are also 2-8 in their last 10 games, as they haven't been on a hot streak. At the plate, they are scoring 4.35 runs per game and hitting .245 as a team. This is the 17th least amount of runs scored per game and the 13th highest overall team batting average. They have shown that they can successfully reach base safely, but they have struggled to drive in men when they are in scoring position. The Cubs have also shown that they do have a little pop in their bat, though. They are averaging 1.00 home runs per game, which is the 19th highest average in the MLB. When they are scoring a lot of runs, they are hitting the ball out of the park. It takes a lot for the Cubs to score, as stringing together multiple hits hasn't been the easiest task for them this season. Expect the Cubs to be very aggressive on the bases once they have reached safely. They have already stolen 59 bases this season, which is the fourth most in the MLB. This has been the easiest way to move their base runners into scoring position. I like the Mets in this one. They have the advantage on the mound, and they have been hitting the ball better than the Cubs. I also don't love that the Cubs have lost 8 of their last 10 games. The Mets are also scoring the fourth most runs per game, and they have the fifth highest overall team batting average. They will hit Marcus Stroman hard in this one, and the Cubs will be forced to turn to their bullpen. He has struggled this season and I don't see him heating up against the Mets. Chicago is allowing the 26th most runs per game, and they have already committed the 22nd most errors. They will continue to make mistakes in the field, and the Mets will take advantage. I also see Taewin Walker having a great game in this one. The Cubs' bats are cold and he has been a man on a mission this season. He is currently 7-2 with a 2.63 ERA. He will shut the Cubs down when they are at the plate and New York will slowly pull away. They have the advantage on the mound and they are the better hitting team. Pick the New York Mets and lay the run line spread, minus 1.5. Chicago comes into this matchup averaging a respectable 4.34 runs per game, good for 16th in the bigs. Marcus Stroman will be on the mound, and he impressed in his return from the injured list last week against the Dodgers. He gave up only two hits with three strikeouts, but only managed to last four innings. As long as he does not suffer any blow-up innings against an excellent New York offense, this game should stay under the projected total. Further, Walker has been one of New York's best pitchers this season, so he should easily navigate the Cubs lineup. The total number has gone under in four of New York's last six games overall. Take the easy under for that game.